Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Martinez and today we're making vegan chicken pot pie. To start the filling, we're going to take all of that vegan chicken we made last week and we're going to shred it up by hand or by using a knife of choice. Then we're going to heat up a large skillet. I have the skillet that is not non-stick but generally works very well. Add about a teaspoon to two teaspoons of olive oil and add one russet potato, a large russet potato ideally, two carrots that have been chopped nicely and finely, and one medium yellow onion. If you don't want to add too much onion, be sure to half this. Add a teaspoon of salt and then a teaspoon of black pepper. These are your basic seasonings, but then we will get into the more complicated seasonings in just a little bit. The important thing here is that you want to make sure that your potatoes cook completely because these will cook a little bit in the oven when they're in the pot pie, but it's best to have the vegetables cooked thoroughly before anything goes into the oven. Add one to two cups of vegetable broth to unstick the vegetables and potatoes and carrots, etc. Or you can use olive oil, but vegetable broth works really nicely here because we're going to transform this into a thick filling with more vegetable broth. And then we're going to add one celery stick. So I happen to have some frozen celery in my freezer. I just took some of that out, but please be sure to use fresh if you have it around. Add two to three minced garlic cloves. You can add these at the beginning, but I like to add them a little later because it preserves some of the nutritional value of garlic cloves. And then add a teaspoon of celery seed. Celery seed is essential to get that really nice chicken pot pie flavor. So be sure to not omit this ingredient. Continuously add more vegetable broth to your filling and stir and let those potatoes cook a good 20 minutes covered. Of course, I didn't feature this because who wants to watch that? But once everything is nice and mushy, very tender vegetables, you're going to add five to six cups of the shredded vegan chicken. I chose to add all of that vegan chicken we made last week. You can use less if you have a smaller pot pie tin. Add 1.5 cups of fresh or frozen green beans. Now to create a thicker filling, we're going to add half a cup of whole wheat flour. You can use all purpose if you prefer. I like the fiber, I like the texture of whole wheat flour, so this is the one I chose to use. This will work as a bit of a roux. Of course, this is an unconventional roux. It's not starting with a roux base at the beginning. But to loosen up some of this flour mixture, we're going to add another additional um, half cup of soy milk or vegetable broth, feel free to just use vegetable broth if that's all you have. I use, used sweetened soy milk because I like that nice gentle sweet flavor, balances it out nicely, but you can use unsweetened if you prefer. Now if the flour is sticking just a bit, add and mix as you go, it will unstick, I promise. And last but not least, add a 3 fourths cup of nutritional yeast. This adds a bit of the vegetable broth umami flavor that may be missing, um, and so I highly recommend using nutritional yeast. For the construction of the pie, we need to create the crusts. This is only my recipe for one olive oil pie crust. You want to use two of these because you need a bottom and a top crust. So I actually had one in the freezer already made, but I had to make another one. So combine 450 grams of all-purpose flour, 150 grams of olive oil, teaspoon of salt, and three to five tablespoons of cold water. You can do this by hand like I did or in a food processor, which is a bit faster. Just add a towel while we let that rest for about 10 to 15 minutes and then you're going to grease a cheesecake pie tin, those nice ones where the bottom pops out. I, the name of these always eludes me, so forgive me. But we're going to take essentially half of the pie dough, roll it out really nicely with our rolling pin. I love my rolling pin. It's the French style rolling pin. It's the best. And we're going to gently lay that into the pie tin, making sure that it falls nicely and everything fits, especially at the bottom because we want enough room to fill the filling. 
take all of your pie filling that has hopefully been chilled you do not want to put it in steaming hot because this will actually ruin the texture of your pie crust nobody wants a soggy bottom so make sure to make your pie filling first the night before or give it a good two to three hours in the refrigerator before stuffing your pie I like to fill mine all the way to the brim because I have a huge pie eater at home and then you're gonna have to roll up the second half of your pie crust about as thinly as you'd like and make your top crust. We want a double crusted savory pie. I don't even think there are single crust savory pies. If there are, leave them in the comments because I wanna know more about them. I wanna know how to veganize them. But this, of course, the traditional chicken pot pie has a double crust. So lay it out nice and thin, roll it onto your rolling pin and extend it over your pie and your pie filling so everything is super nice and enclosed. This is probably my favorite part of making pie because you see it essentially come to life in its beautiful way. It almost looks like a pillow it's, and it's marvelous. Grab a pair of scissors that you may have laying around. You can use conventional scissors or kitchen scissors and cut off that extra dough. Be sure to save that dough in the freezer for any future pie making or you can toss it, but I recommend saving it. Trim it, but leave about half an inch or an inch of extra dough on the ends because you want to make sure that everything is nice and glued. The bottom pie crust to the top pie crust. And then I like to just take the fork and crimp the edges to the pan, to the pie pan. It won't stick because you've already greased everything. Grab a nice serrated knife when you're done adding these crimped edges and give a couple dashes so we can let the steam escape from the pie while it bakes. They also look really nice and decorative, get as fancy as you'd like. Bake this pie at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 to 45 minutes until really nice and brown. You can continue to bake this pie a little longer if you prefer a deeper colored crust, but this is just the way I like it. It's nice and buttery, but it has a nice color. Allow the pie to sit in the tin for 10 to 15 minutes because you want everything to settle nicely. And then if you want to, you can let it completely chill in this pie tin or take out the sleeve that encases it like I did here and let it, this obviously lets it cool a little faster. So I recommend doing this. My favorite part of pie making is opening the pie. I always get too impatient and I always want to cut into the pie a bit more a bit before it has set. The most ideal way to have a pie set is to let it cool completely, normally overnight. But because we wanna eat this for dinner, you gotta cut yourself a slice. So grab a serrated knife or a really nice sharp knife and cut yourself a big hefty pie of this vegan chicken pot pie. Serve with some gravy, some baked beans, goes well for dinner, for lunch. Talk about comfort food and decadence. If you like this video, Make sure to comment and subscribe. See you next week.